Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of week. It's a Friday on June 21st. It's party time. That means the one and only. Ladies and gentlemen, on the stage now from Puyallup, Washington, put your hands together for Chris Cinnamon Egan. Uh, Chris is brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. They've got three great locations in Sumner, downtown Puyallup, and, of course, South Hill, home of the original No Big Dill Pickle Pizza. You can book three of their food trucks right now, catering, birthday parties, graduations, corporate events. Voted best of the sound two years in a row for best pizza. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, and at FatZaxPizza.com. Episode 175. Hello, wow. Chris Egan. How are you on a wonderful, beautiful Friday? How's the South Sound doing? I mean, you can't puck it. This is this is why we live in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous out there. I mean, it is just beautiful. I'm sure the gooey ducks are popping their necks. The eagles are flying. The king salmon are swimming freely. The silvers are rolling in. I mean, it just, this is, welcome to America, everybody. The Olympic trials are in full swing. We we send off the great Shailise Jones from Ascend Gymnastics today as she heads off to the trials. We've got track athletes heading down to Eugene to get ready for that. I mean, it is it is red, white, and blue Friday on PuckSports.com. We're fired up. We're ready to go. And Puck, I'll tell you what, last Friday, I couldn't even believe I could get through uh, this podcast because I'd been just drained. Went to Edmonton, watched the sun, played baseball. Friday, you know, it was, it was do the podcast. Saturday, graduation, Piaf High gets poured on. Sunday, up at 6 a.m. to go see the daughter graduate, get her master's degree. Here's the best thing, Puck, by the way, if your daughter's getting or son's getting a master's degree, uh, they get their degree like either their first row or second row. So you don't, there's like literally 2,000 students at Portland State graduating. She was the 18th person to get her degree. We're out of there. So (laughs) we, we, we finished lunch before the graduation ceremony was even over, Pocket. Now, it was pointed out by several people that yeah. when you were photographed with your, your beautiful daughter and get receiving her master's, that you were, looked like you were wearing a suit. I had a suit with a Portland State tennis shirt underneath it. I wanted to represent the Vikings. It's not what I'm concerned about. Okay. I'm concerned about what was on your feet. Uh, they were just very comfortable shoes. Very comfortable. I thought we weren't wearing tennis shoes with a suit. That I think that's somebody else. You know, I'm not. Oh, a, is that not you? That's you know, that's Garofolo. Yeah, that's right. Where are you at with tennis shoes I'm, on on the suit? You're good with it. It's long as you're comforting. You know, long as it's, it, you know what you're walking around all day. I thought it blended well with the suit. I think it was fine. My only you know pet peeves are tucking in jerseys. Um, you know, and I, I sit there and say guys shouldn't wear their hats backwards, but yet I'll do that myself. So I'm not going to sit here, and, you know, and be hypocritical on this podcast. But, you know, just my only big pet peeve is denim on denim and uh, let's not tuck in the jerseys. So that's that's it for me. Is I'm pretty you, easy. Hold I'm, on. That's your cardinal rule. No, I, I mean, the, the, it's the Canadian tuxedo. You, yeah. You, you, you can't ever go denim on denim. No denim on denim. I'm not a big fan of... Uh, Girls, there was a there was a phase there where girls were wearing jeans the, where the buttons were on the outside. Didn't understand it. Wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, button, buttons on the outside. I thought you were going to say. It, I think it's still a thing. The mom jeans where we pull them all the high yeah. waist and we, yeah. And it works for some ladies. It doesn't work for some of you who yeah. have a gut like me. Well, here's the thing. Nobody's ever complained about Lululemon. Are, are we getting, are there many compliments about mom jeans? I, I just don't know if there are. I really don't. I, I agree with you. I, 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 the, the Lululemon, everyone looks good in, in a yeah. pair of those black Lululemon pants. You Everybody. can wear them seven days a week, Puck, and I would be fine with it. It's amazing. not you, but you know, my wife could. Yeah. It's amazing, though, what they can get away with, these women, because you're right. They can wear that lounging around the house. They can yep. go to the grocery store. They can, you know, uh, they go to a ball game, and then they can go out on a date and look all fancy in them. I mean, my God, it's so universal. We got, we have nothing like that, no. nothing. We, we either go, you know, like I'm getting ready for a wedding tomorrow. Not my daughter's wedding, but a friend of ours' big wedding is tomorrow. Uh, it, it's going to be 80 degrees out, and 
you know, what, what, do you, what do you do? It's going to be a pretty fancy wedding. I'm thinking I got to go suit, suit, no tie. Puck, help me out here. Suit, tie. I think a wedding, I like, again, it's amazing because I look like a slob 99.9% of the time. <laughs> but I do that that 0.1% when it's a wedding. I like to I like to go all out. I say you got to go tie. Tie, tie, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. I'm going to go I'm going to go blue suit tie. I'll go all out just for you, but I blue wanna... suit, huh? You're not going with your traditional black suit, huh? Well, I do like the black suit, but you know what? That's probably you know a little too formal. That's a little Emmy award winning night, you know, formal uh, you know. So I will I will not go black suit. Maybe gray. Maybe we'll pull out the gray, but we'll see. Okay. Shifting back pocket to the graduations. Shifting yes, back please. to the graduations. I sat through two graduations in two days, and it made me kind of reflect a little bit here. And I'm just, I want to get your thoughts on this. You sit back and you listen to these speakers, and each graduation has anywhere from three to four speakers. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna poo-poo these speakers, but they get up there on stage, these speakers, and they start quoting these French philosophers, they're quoting Descartes, they're, you know, they, you know, they're throwing a little Socrates, a little Plato out there. And I'm thinking, what are we doing? What are we doing on this stage? I mean, you're, you're, you're just saying all this intellectual stuff that sounds good on paper, sounds like you're smart, but are you in the end, Puckett, are you in the end helping the students that are listening to this speech? Because I'm pretty sure 98% of them, that is going right over their head when you start quoting French philosophers. My thoughts are, you know what? Let's simplify the graduation speech. Let's, let's celebrate that they've graduated, but let's give them some basics that they can take with them on to the next level. I mean, if I was sitting there in graduation and my speaker said, you know what? Wear your retainer more often. Wear your retainer. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, wear you know what? That's a good point. I should wear my retainer. Yo, Chris, take your hat off a little mo bit more to, to help fight baldness and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, so so that. you don't you think the the graduation speeches ceremonies are getting a little too a little too preachy? Is that what we're kind of getting? A, down you know down? what? Everybody that's that is speaching is speeching? now like this speeching? Some master. Did you say speeching or speaking? I, I think I just used the word <laughs> speechy. Uh, I just created that word. That's how. Write that one down. And everybody that's speeching nowadays feels like they have to be this just super motivational uh, speaker. What I think you just simplify it. You know what we need right now? Just easy. It's, it's okay, everybody, to disagree. Let's get along. Wear your suntan lotion. Put your suntan lotion on. You know? Okay. Just some basics, Puck. Let's get back to some basics. I feel like we've lost the basics. Okay. Um, Hey, put your money away, kids. You're going to get some graduation money today. Save a little of it. You don't Save need, it. You don't need to go to Chipotle five out of seven days a week. Save a little bit of that money. Put your phone down once in a while, everybody. Put your pocket is just getting absolutely incredible. I mean, you look at these kids now. I, I feel like an old timer, but my God. God. You feel you are an old timer. You are yelling at the clouds right now. Oh my God, Puck! And I'm coaching these kids, and, I, and I'm giving my post game speech the other night, and I can see that they're just they're, they're just because the speech is going over five minutes, and they can't get to their phones. And I'm just like, and I keep going, and I, I see like three of them all of a sudden are like, I gotta see my Instagram. I got to see my TikTok. I got to get on my phone. <laughs> just like... This is why you don't do the post game <laughs> speech. God, we've talked about this. Don't do it. I love the post game speech. God, I know you do, but like we had a we had a we had a scrimmage last night for for baseball all stars, and and uh, unfortunately we we took it on the chin a little bit. <laughs> a lot of a lot of unforced. Hit your cut. <laughs> the cut. <laughs> We've worked on this every practice. Yeah. You get the ball, you hit your cut, whatever. Nobody wants to hit the cut anymore. No yeah. one wants to hit the cut, and it's not that hard. It yeah. really isn't. And in practice, they do it, and then it gets in the game, and it's like, <laughs> just it's, they everyone throws up on themselves. But so the game gets over, and the other team, you know, they're sitting down. Like, I could hear the coach, hey, uh, Johnny, go find a nice, uh, nice cool spot so we can have our team meeting. And I'm like, team meeting. <laughs> I'm like, the second this game's over, 
we are packing up and out of here. <laughs> like there's no the only thing I care about is you guys pick up you guys wanted to have snacks in the dugout. That's fine. You know, I'm not a big snacks in the dugout fan. No, me either. But if you but if you want to have it, let's clean up all the orange peels and, and the candy wrappers. And then that that's it. And then we're out of here. There's no yeah. post game speech. All right. I'm not gonna yell at you because we couldn't hit the cutoff guy 17 times in a row. Well, you were you were having that issue. I'm coaching a summer league team in Auburn, and I'm trying oh. to explain to my guards uh, when you turn the ball over, uh, that's a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> stop turning the ball over. And it got to the point where one of the guards just kept dribbling to the corner. I said, "Why do you keep dribbling to the corner? That's where they want you to go." Well, it's open there. I go, "That's where they want you to go. Stop turning it over." I was like, "Oh." How do you not lose your cool? I, I there's sometimes I just oh, there the, when I lose my cool and I I, I always kind of do this like hard slap like when we make a mistake and then I'm like oh my god I'm like but the kid, just you know what? stop it stop yeah. overreacting to this I go back to I go back to King Five Year One Month One so we're talking 22 years ago Puckett and uh, Paul Sylvie. Uh, I, I made an edit, and basically in, in the sports TV world, if you're doing highlights, you don't want to ever go out of the highlight mid-highlight. If you, if, yeah, if yeah. Does that make sense? Like you yeah, want, yeah, I got gotcha. you. You want to end on a highlight, and if you have to, find some fans and stuff like that. Well, I, went, I ended one of Paul Sylvie's scripts mid-highlight, and he came out of the booth and just kind of just laid into me. He's like, you know, we don't do that here, man. Egan, this is, you know, and it just kind of like was very intense. And I was like, holy cow. Okay. Wow. Okay. I'm, welcome to Seattle. I better get my crap together here. Yeah. And he told me later that day, he goes, I yelled at you there because I actually care about you and I want you to succeed. If I didn't say anything, then it pretty much means I, you know what? I don't really care how you do. And I've taken that with me a lot with these kids. Yeah. I don't yell at them, but I tell the kids like, hey, if I'm if I'm not even saying anything to you, then that means, you know what? I, I don't even know who you are, you know? Yeah, so, and true. I try to tell that, you know, I get tough on these kids once in a while. And I, I think they need it. I think they uh, deserve it. But you know what? If, if you don't say anything, then these kids are just going to kind of keep doing what they're doing. So yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fair, let me ask you, let me ask you on, along those lines. Cause I think I got a 10 year old and now he doesn't watch this or listen to this. So he'd get mad if I brought this up. I think he's faced a little bit adversity for the first time. And I'm going to say quotation marks adversity. So he wanted to, he wanted to try out for another one of these club baseball teams. And so he did yeah. so this week and he got, and then I appreciate it. Cause they, they said, Hey, we'll, we'll let you know the next day and all that. And then they got back to us and they said, hey, we would like him um, to come out to another tryout. We want to get, uh, you know, look at him further rather than, hey, yes, he can be on the team. And my son is, he's, as you would expect, is any 10-year-old because he was really excited about this team because the reason he wants to go up there, he's got a couple buddies that are on that team. Uh, yeah. And he's really bummed out. And it sucks because today's the last day of school. And so that's kind of ruined that. And I just try to pull him aside and be like, Buddy, it's first of all, they didn't say no. They just said they want to see you again. That's a good thing. Um, so that's number one. Number two, you're 10. The, nothing is decided at 10 years old. Okay. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Just because if it doesn't work out there, that doesn't mean now all of a sudden the, the career path and arc of your life has changed. In four or five years, whoever you think is the best person now in all likelihood in four or five years, they're not going to be. And the person who you don't think is really good right now in four or five years is going to be, but it's a, you know, Chris, you've gone through this. It's, it's a hard, it was a, it was kind of a sleepless night for me, not because I was upset that he immediately didn't get on this, on this said team. It yeah. was that's your kid and you, and I knew, and I know how important it is to him. And so I'm like, how is this going to affect him? And it just, you know, you're like, oh, my God, you know, because I know he's going to come down early in the morning asking if I got the email. And he did that. He came down real early in the morning. And I said, here it is. You can read it. And it's just I could see it in his face. And it's, you know, you know what it's like, right? And people I, watching well, and listening a, to this know what it's like I, as a parent. You just you want the best for them. You want them to be happy and you want them because they're so excited about something. And it's it's hard when 
something that they really want and they don't have it yet, it's you know it's hard as a parent to watch it. Few few reactions on this one, Puck, and actually something this week I just actually talked with an athlete from Seattle about this, which is very interesting that you you bring this up. But and then uh, something popped up on Facebook, which kind of leads into what you're talking about. Uh, number one. It's just very, it's not easy to be a parent. If, if anybody says it's easy to be a parent, then, then you're actually not parenting because it's tough. And we, you know, you go through things like this and you don't know how to handle them. Number two, sometimes I think on these select teams and, and yes, your son wants to be on this team, but sometimes I think it's harder on the parents than it actually is in the kids. Uh, we've had these teams before where you got gray team and, and blue team and, you know, the parents are like, they know the gray team's the number one team and the, and the blue teams. And I'm like, and I've even seen some leagues call it the one team and the two team. I'm like, why are we even doing that? The kids don't know. I mean, the kids just want to play. It's the parents that are reacting more to this than anything. Like they're just worried that their kid's not on the number one team. Um, third point, and you, you nailed it on the head, Puck. You nailed it on the head. What is happening now at 10 and when they're 18 and 20 and 21 is totally different. I had a Facebook post popped up. It was a team that I coached called the Puyallup Pilots. Was, by all means, was not a select team, but we had a lot of great athletes, 14 kids, some very phenomenal athletes on this team, including my son, who was one of the younger ones, Austin, who's now pitching for the Edmonton River Hawks and, and love and life. The picture also was the 14 Cal Ripken All-Stars, like the best 14 kids in all of Puyallup on this all-star team because select teams really weren't going yet. So these, and I still remember that this is 12 and these parents were so like, we're playing 60 games. Our kids going to the major leagues, you know, he's throwing Chris, what's your kid throwing? Mine's got a curveball. He's got velo, you know, and I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, you know, we're, we're having fun. We're, we're going to swim. We're going to have a pool party before our game. Cause we we're not overanalyzing it. So I looked at that picture cause it popped up in my Facebook, 28 kids, 28, Phenomenal athletes, two of them, Pocket, two of them are still playing baseball. That's it. That's it. Two of them. And I would say out of the 28, probably eight of them had a pretty good high school career, whether at Puyallup or Rogers High or Emerald Ridge. So I would say take it up that way, nice and easy, because you know what? So many people put so much into these 10, 11, and 12-year-olds, and then, you know, I say put the phone down and enjoy life. You know what? Skip a tournament once in a while and enjoy life. Go to Chelan. Go, go barbecue. Go camping. Go fishing. You know, take a little break, because you do not need to be playing a tournament every single day. For the past 23 years, I mentioned, you know, the, when Paul Sylvie was pushing me to be better, for the past 23 years, I have interviewed the greatest high school athletes to come out of this state, and I can handpick them. You know, I can go get a Corbin Carroll. I can go get Paulo Bank Carroll, Marcus Trufant. And, Puck, I'm, every one of them is different. Everyone has a different story. But here's the thing. They all, somewhere along the line, had balance in life. A lot, I'd say majority of them were multi-sports kids. But you know what? They weren't burnt out when they were 10, 11, and 12. And they didn't overanalyze not being on the A team. Sure, they're all phenomenal athletes. But And yeah. last, but not, last but not least, Puck, on this story, I sat down as we're getting ready to the Olympics. There's a gal by the name of Jordan Heidema who plays for the Seattle Reign. Phenomenal player. And... From the outside, you just see this, this beautiful young lady who's a phenomenal soccer player for the rain. She's on the Canadian national team. And I sat down and I asked her one question. She gave me a 10-minute answer. My question was, how great was it to win a gold medal with Canada in the 2021 Olympics? And she went into Chris. I don't know if you – I haven't shared this story with a lot of people. But originally, I was not named to the team. I was named as an alternate. Uh, at that point, I was questioning myself, questioning that the coaches on Canada didn't think I was good. This is a girl her whole life has been told you're really good. And she's like, gosh, do I even play anymore? They want me to go to the Olympics as an alternate. I'm not even going to get on the field. Um, and she sat there and analyzed it and analyzed it and talked to people. And she's like, you know what? Coaches maybe not believe in me. The support staff may not believe in me. But in the end, what does it matter? I believe in me. I think I'm good enough. So she, she accepted the role, goes to Japan as an alternate, not expecting to play. They get there because of COVID rules. She's allowed to go on the roster. Game one, she doesn't play. Okay, coaches don't believe in me, but you know what? I believe in me. 
Game two, she doesn't play. She's like, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm still no, I'm really good. Game three, they put her in. She's never came out ever since. <laughs> She's never came out ever since. She was huge in helping Canada win a gold medal. She's going to be on that Canadian national team again, trying to win a second gold medal for them. She's a young rising star for the rain. I mean, she's phenomenal. But in the end, it's all about what do you believe. And, uh, you know, she believed in herself. There's going to be a lot of coaches along the way that are going to say, you know what, you didn't, you didn't go through our program. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. But as long as you keep believing in yourself and working hard, you'll be fine. So. Yeah, that's a I, lot I to throw it, out your ten-year-old puck, but uh. no, no. But I, I think it's a lot. No, because I, I think it's just you know you, you know, at the core of all of this, you, you just want what's best for your son, your daughter, and all that. And, and yeah. I, what I don't want is you know there, there's a two-part thing. One, I'm, um, I'm upset just because he's upset. Yeah, that's it. Uh, but sure. I also want, but I also do like the challenge a little bit, Chris, of, of quote adversity uh there's nothing wrong with that and i want and i'm curious and how he's going to react to this because i think you can you can sulk about it or you can turn around and be like all right well the next tryout we have i'll try i'm going to try and do better i'm going to i'm going to play better i'm going to prove to them uh they can take me well but i also just want to but i just want him to i just want him to realize that whatever happens this does not define you yeah. at all. And yeah. of course, like every parent, I've used the, which is partially a lie. You know that, uh, and I did it. I did it because I have a picture. I don't know if you can see it in the background of Jordan hitting the game winner against the Jazz. Oh yeah. I said, I said, you know that, you know that Michael Jordan, he was, uh, he was cut from his high school team's junior year. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, technically, yes, but he just wasn't put on the varsity team. Yeah. Yeah, but, hey, but it all works out, right? It I mean, all works. The message you know still funny, works, Tuck? and they're not going to fact check you on it. And it, it is life. I talk about the summer league basketball uh, uh, te- team I'm coaching, and we're playing up. We're playing big kids, and we play yeah. this team from Auburn, and we absolutely get destroyed. And all you can do is compliment Auburn that they got a really good program, and the players are really good. But I saw a dad in the parking lot of ours, and I'm like, oh, boy, he's not, He's going to be upset. You know, or he's, he's, we just got killed. And he, this is a very, very successful businessman in Pierce County who's done very well for himself. Um, just he's done very well, say that. And he goes, you know what, Chris, this is awesome. I'm like, huh? He goes, this is so cool that the kids are going to get, you know, beat bad like this because, you know what, that's life. You know, he goes, my, he goes. Yeah. I've made millions of dollars, but I've had a lot of bad days and bad years along the way. Wait, and did he, he really say that? You know, well, Chris, I've, uh, I've made well, millions of dollars. He didn't say that, but he didn't have to to me because I know I know how much he's made over the years. Uh, but it was cool to hear it from a, just a non-coach and like, yeah. you know what? This is good for these kids. They've got to go through these. You know, everybody just wants to win. Everybody just wants to post the wins on their Facebook page. You know, hey, Johnny, you know. Is, is the starting pitcher, you know, and he's right. throwing 80 miles an hour. And uh, you know what? I, I think we got to be a little more uh, vulnerable. And, and you know what? I, and I'll be willing to put, you know what? Hey, my summer league team is two and five, but we're, we're getting better. And that's all that matters. So I just, yeah, I, I think, I think the most important thing at this age and what my message to him would be, I, I just want whatever happens right here. I want you to continue to play and have and have fun and grow because yeah. the la- the worst thing that you could possibly do for for anyone, parent, coach, whatever, in a similar situation like this is to to put too much pressure on the kid, you know, to to be too forceful with them and oh and 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 come down on them and somehow punish them and then all you know what's going to happen? They're going to tune you out and they're going to tune the sport out. Yeah. And they go, I don't want to play anymore. And that's that's the last thing that, and that's that sad. you want. Yeah, you don't want that. I mean, you want you two want to be watching Mariners games. You two want to be going to the World Series this year. Uh, you know, yeah. you guys, you know, that, that, that's what it should be about. But I will say this: sometimes a little break away from dad, coach, is 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 a good thing because now they got to now. You know, when you got dad, it's kind of dad or mom. It's the safety blanket. I'm always going to be on this team. Probably going to always find a way in. And yes. I'll, Trust me, most parents I know coach their kids harder, but you're, they're always going to be on the team. So if, if you can get a little break away from the parents, you know, that means you may have to work a little harder too. So nothing wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, it's good stuff. That's a good stuff. What a uh, have you gone out to? Did, did you go out to Sahali for, at all for the for the golf? 
I did, and it was interesting. I sat on the 18th hole from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock doing my live shots. And what I, what I watched was something I've never really seen before was we watch TV and all we do is see these golfers and, and this luxury life they live just, you know, but when you get behind the scenes and you see, it was basically one team after another coming in on the 18th hole, just working on their game. And then there with each golfer, there's, there's the coach, there's the mom, there's the dad, there's like a social media person. It was absolutely amazing. But then to see them, how meticulous they are with their shots, you know, like from just everywhere. I, I was just fascinated watching them during this, like we're going to take 20, 20 putts from this location. We're going to take 20 more putts from this location. And just the note taking and, and what goes in the golf was just absolutely, I, I thought it was pretty cool to just sit there and, and watch how they prepare for a major That's championship. Great. And, and so Holly Puck is absolutely just gorgeous. I mean, it, I personally would be freaked out to golf on that course with a slice that I have. I mean, I could, I, I think I would feel safe to put it off the tee box because I, 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 the, I mean, that thing is, ju- it's almost, it's almost too picturesque. It just, they need to have more championships there. It's gorgeous. It's unbelievable. It's, it's one of the, it's one of the nicest golf courses. Well, it's one of the nicest golf courses around and it's, yeah, it's a crime that there aren't more, you know, major events there, especially there on the, uh, on the men's side. So we've got uh, today marks the end of elementary school for, for my son. Oh, we boy. have the, uh, we had the, the party yesterday, graduation. graduation. Right. Yeah. The, but you know, I'm, this is, this is a topic every year we talk about doing, do we have graduation ceremonies for, for leaving yeah. uh, elementary school. I mean, it's a thing now, but it never oh, was I a thing. Seven when, I guess we were phone. Yeah, I got seven pictures on my phone <laughs> with my nephews. Gra- and they're like, hey, we're going to celebrate. Gra-. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You get nothing from you get nothing from Uncle Chris. You should get out of sixth grade. There's nothing. You should get out of there. <laughs> yeah, you- there's nothing. Congr- I'm not congratulating you because you can add and subtract. Yeah, you know, you, you get no card from Uncle Chris that you got out of sixth grade. I didn't get one. I was told he wanted for, money. He goes, "Where's my money?" <laughs> what do you think the toughest? What do you think the toughest grade was for you? What say that again? What was the toughest grade for you? Oh, I think I would say grade, I. I'm saying seventh I, I grade for me. I would say. Seventh grade, I would say uh, freshman year of college was the toughest grade for me because That's it just was yeah. it was too much all at once, and I I yeah. was not prepared for that. Yeah, that no, I remember freshman year. Uh, my uh, one of my roommates uh, got away from mom and dad and drank so much the first night that he threw up so hard that he blew blew blood vessels in his eyes because it was just, there was, there's so much being thrown at you at college. It's like, all of a sudden you're like, wait a second. I, I don't have a curfew. I can do whatever I want. And yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. Probably freshman year of college is probably the, that's the toughest. Okay. See, and that a good graduation speaker, Puck, as we take it from the beginning to the end, would prep you for that. Would prep, you know, like, hey, let's start prepping for first year of, of college. So don't drink so much on that opening night. <laughs> and with that, we conclude episode 175 with Chris Egan, brought to you by Fat Zach's Pizza. You have yourself a wonderful weekend. We'll reconvene hey, great- next Friday for another edition. Have a great graduation ceremony tonight. Um, you know, really celebrate that uh, elementary graduation. Get a Costco sheet cake for me. Uh, sure, the wife will want to, you know, get some. Uh, some some just decorations some maybe some fresh peonies throughout the house just to really celebrate the night so congratulations thank you thank you it's a it's a big night for all of us there he is chris egan uh we'll talk to you next week thanks chris